The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, lo looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, I would like to uh, mention to you that today is going to be the day that we are going to have Rich Anderson uh, as our guest. Uh, he'll be on at the half hour, and then on Friday, we're going to have Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives on. So Rich will be talking to us about the grain markets today. But um, the main thing I want to talk about today was uh, this article that came out this morning about how the uh, European banks are going to support uh, – all of the banks over there by monetizing the debt or whatever they decide to do. Folks, uh, we've been there, done that. You know, uh, the charts uh, are telling you that something's not right here. Um, they lost 11% yesterday in Deutsche Bank, and they got that back today uh, based on this news announcement that came out. But they never really say, uh, you know, what they're going to do. They're just innuendos. And, you know, maybe they'll be able to do it, but it's not going to be with a news announcement, I don't believe. So we'll be able to see uh, if that's going uh, to be the case or not. Uh, so we want to keep an eye on that. Deutsche Bank still looks like it wants to go to somewhere between $9 a share and $5 a share. Uh, right now it's trading at around 14 It hit... Uh, uh, just about almost 12 yesterday. Uh, then we rallied back uh, a little bit today in it. But I'm watching that stock because it has all the same uh, chart patterns like we had with Lehman Brothers back in 2008. They're just uh, incredibly similar. Now, uh, we've had some interest to here in the gold and silver here the last day or two. Uh, put up. We'll start out with the silver. I just want to go through a few of these because uh, we've hit some major spots here in some of these things. As you can see, the silver uh, has uh, gone up to the 61% retracement of the October high. And as you can see, there's a long-term trend line going back to last May. In fact, it goes farther back than May. But you'll notice that the 61% retracements have held that each time. Now, gold has been you know, far, far stronger. Uh, we've had a $120 rally off of the 61% retracement that we had back at the uh, 1070 level actually went a little bit higher than that and uh, but it's right in the ballpark of where we should be having some resistance here uh, in the gold market also the the key number there is 1203 per ounce if we get above that boy this thing could really uh, really take off but right now it's still in a downtrend if you just look at the longer just look at silver look at gold they they are still in uh, pretty much of a downtrend now we're going to take a look at uh, also platinum just to show you you know how strong this gold market has been compared to uh, the platinum market now platinum yesterday completed a uh, a perfect uh, uh, ABCD pattern from the January low uh, it went right up into that uh, 940 uh, level. We're down about 11 or $12 from that right now. But as you can see, that was a 61% retracement of the October high that we were just looking at in silver. Silver made the 61% retracement of that. Now look at gold. Gold took out the October high. Um, that is the stronger, uh, you know, of course, and we've said that all along, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. But that's what's, uh, that's what's happening here in these metals that, you know, that it, gold is pulling everything up with it. So the key here is if we get above these highs that we made this week uh, on Monday, uh, we're going a lot higher. Uh, what we want to look for on the downside uh, so far this morning, uh, gold has sold off about $17. Excuse me has sold off just about $20 an ounce uh, from its high. And if you'll remember, uh, we've always talked about these harmonic numbers, and the harmonic numbers in gold are 18 and 36. So that's very close to the first pullback. It's also 38% retracement 
of the last correction that we had going back uh, six or seven days ago. So, so far, gold is still acting, you know, relatively good. If we break below the 1180 level, that will set up 1167, and that'll be the really key one to look at because we'll be down $34 from the high, and, <clears throat> excuse me, that would be the one that um, would really offer the, um, the lowest risk uh, entry point uh, if you want to uh, enter on the long side uh, of the gold market. So we'll watch that uh, uh, closely also. Um, we've had several questions about the crude oil, and I was listening to um, John Logan's excellent description of what oil is doing. And it's it's basically what it's doing, folks. I'll, I'll put it up here uh, to let you folks take a look at it. But this is the continuation chart. <clears throat> that we have uh, in oil, and we're almost down there uh, right now. We're within just a, a half a cent, uh, half a dollar per gallon of uh, where it should find some major support, which would be uh, at that ABCD level uh, on the longer term continuation. Now, this is over, this is a two hour chart, so it goes back quite a ways back when the market made its bottom down there. So, this is another. Uh, a, B, C, D pattern. You saw the first one on the left where point X is marked. That was the uh, actual contract low. Then we rallied about 25%. And now what we're doing is we're retesting that retracement level to see if it's going to give us some uh, help or not. Uh, we're not getting a lot of help from uh, uh, heating oil and also gasoline because they're not, uh, you know, they're not nearly uh, running away to the upside. So there's still a lot of selling coming across the uh, the markets uh, on some of these things. Um, the Chinese market will open uh, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, that's what I, I heard today on Bloomberg. So uh, that'll be interesting to watch because it broke down below major support. Uh, and it, you know, whether it's going to gap, I don't believe it's going to gap down. I, that's just my opinion because everybody's going to be expecting it, and it'll probably do just the opposite of what people are expecting. The thing that's watching, uh, that's worth watching, is the fact that the Nikkei, the Japanese stock market, again was down. It was down five and a half points on uh, Monday. It was down another 2.7 percent on Tuesday. So it's had an 8 percent drop this week. So we'll see, uh, you know, what's going on, uh, you know, with these things. Um, one of the questions that we've had about a stock this morning that has been brought to our attention is the fact that Disney, uh, even though they've had Star Wars out, you know, is under a great deal of pressure now. And they're saying that the problem is, is their online and uh, Internet business, whatever that happens to be, and Star Wars is not uh, being too much of an influence. I mean, it's the biggest grossing mo motion picture of all time, I believe, and they're saying it doesn't mean anything. Hello? We'll see. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll we'll look at this one, one day at a time with Disney, but I kind of keep an eye on Disney because if it gets sold off a little bit more, it's going to be pretty interesting uh, from the long side if it can get down uh, into that area uh, just a, a little bit more. That's the, the key to, uh, you know, really uh, sort of watch. Now, I've had a question. One, one, someone has asked a question about foreign exchange, so I wanted to cover it, and that's the Australian dollar. And all I'm going to do is to uh, show you the daily chart of the Australian dollar. And right after we have this break, we'll, we'll talk about it. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
that has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at this Australian dollar. We've had a request from someone out of Sydney, Australia. And basically, as you can see here, uh, we've made that 135 pattern where we had the lower tops. Uh, each one of those is very, very close to be uh, cyclically uh, symmetrical. In other words, from high to high and high to high is very good. And then also the ratios back. We're also spot on at 786 retracements. So what's happened now is yesterday we came down and we made a 61% retracement of the low we made earlier in the year. So we are in a possibility of the uh, Australian dollar uh, has a chance to rally. But if we go below this low that we made just yesterday, that tells us the Australian is going to go down a lot more. And of course, you know that the uh, correlation between crude oil and the Canadian dollar is extremely high, as it is with the Canadian dollar and crude oil. So the Australian and the Canadian have tremendous uh, correlations to crude oil. Evidently, they have a lot of exports, so we'll watch to see if that's going to be the case. Um, as far as the S&P 500 yesterday, uh, we've had a couple of pretty good rallies uh, in here overnight uh, based on uh, just regular, you know, chart action. Nothing, you know, really uh, spectacular uh, of any kind, but it still gives you an idea of some of the things that we're looking at uh, in the uh, market for uh, stocks. And we have a lot of resistance at the 1870 level uh, in the, uh, let's make that 1874 level uh, in the S&P 500 uh, E-mini. It uh, has a great deal of resistance there. And it does have support down again at the 1840 level. So that's primarily what we're looking at. Folks, we are flat out in a bear market. Uh, I think if we look at, you know, some of the cycles that we've looked at, 
uh, they've been acting nicely, so you've got to think that this is what we're looking at. And we have, uh, you know, Janet Yellen's going to be speaking today. I, I don't know why someone didn't say Yellen is Yellen, but uh, no one's brought that out yet. Hmm, have to use that for a political thing for one of the badges when she runs for president in four years. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll tell you, folks, I will be so happy. When this election stuff is over, I get so sick of listening to the rhetoric that goes on that it just is, uh, it's actually nauseating. I just don't understand how people can, well, I guess I should understand, but I don't. Uh, anyway, it's just one people, one person saying out of one ear and out the other, I, I just don't believe him. You can always tell a politician uh, when he's lying because his lips are moving. <laughs> That's the old adage, but we'll see. Anyway, we will go on here. Uh, pretty soon we're going to have Rich on in about another 10 minutes, and you'll stop listening to me babbling on. But uh, <laughs> someone said I should use the mute button, the mute button, and uh, I don't even watch it. I do. I I, I wanted to see who won yesterday, and I don't even know why I did that because I have, you know, I didn't really care who won. But, uh, you know, when you listen to some of the stuff that they say, you have to use the mute button. So maybe you guys should use the mute button for me. That That's always a possibility that someone might bring up. We don't know. But the main things that we have here is we've got the really big breakdown in the in the Japanese market. We're having the breakdown in the Chinese market. We're having the breakdown in the emerging market market. I'm telling you folks, this thing does not look good. Uh, you know, uh, I, I just, you know, I look at this and I say, my goodness, we are, we are in a, we're in the throes of a, a giant uh, a Kodiak bear, the big grizzly, you know, so uh, we'll wait and see how much rallies we get in here. But we had this new moon uh, and this, this other aspect that occurred and, you know, the market uh, never had any rally coming off of a new moon, at least not yet. Now, maybe it's going to rally later today and we're going to continue all continue on up. And if we do rally, we could get as high as probably 1950 or maybe 1970 in the S&P. But uh, the rallies that we're having are just very, very weak. I mean, that should give you an indication of, uh, you know, what's going on. And when they start beating stocks up that have been the favorites, I mean, how can anybody beat up Amazon? I mean, my God, everybody loved this stock at $600 a share. You know, now it's 400 and nobody wants to touch it. You know, uh, so, you know, they love Disney at 115. Now it's at 80, uh, 89 or something. No, it's even lower than that. So it's, uh, you know, something's uh, something has changed in the game. Uh, Europe is not giving us any help. Uh, we're certainly not getting any help from the emerging markets or Asia. So you're looking at a global downturn. And commodities have been telling us this for, you know, well over a year that there's something not right. They're not using products. They're not shipping products. Remember, we looked at the Dow Jones transportations, how it broke down. Now, the utilities... You know, that gave a sell signal uh, on Friday you know, in the Dow Jones Utilities. And so that's just a, you know, counter trend Gartley pattern that uh, has formed. And that that's actually negative on the market also. But utilities are based on, you know, these interest rates. And interest rates are, uh, you know, they're, they're really just, it's like a Pied Piper, folks. Hey, this is my opinion. I'm going to give it to you whether you like it or not. Since this is my show, it's not your show, it's my show. Well, it's Tom's show. I'm just a guest. Anyway, I wanted to, to put this up here. This is the long-term bond chart uh, going over the past year because uh, we were looking at this big ABCD pattern up here. We did get to that uh, 167.08 level uh, yesterday. We took out the highs from April. We haven't gone anywhere yet, but uh, that's basically it. Remember what Bernard Baruch said, don't be concerned on the return on your money. Be concerned on the return of your money. By the way, I want to award a gold star today to the people at Goldman Sachs. Uh, they came out and they uh, said that of the six things that they had for the best trades for 2016, five of them didn't work. And that takes a lot of guts to come out there and say that because most people don't even remember what uh, Goldman Sachs said.
but they came out and said, look, five of these did not work. Something is not right. So uh, I, I give them uh, the sound of one hand clapping because, uh, you know, it takes a lot of guts, you know, to say you're wrong. And that's what you got to do in trading. You know, you've got to be able to, to do it. That's why patterns are so good. Uh, it's like the words of uh, our my old friend Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. In other words, trust the patterns, but verify that they're correct because sometimes, you know, they're going to uh, fail. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Mr. Reagan and Nancy several times during the 1970s because one of his uh, largest uh, fundraisers happened to be the wife of one of my very, very dear friends. And so I was able to uh, to go to a couple of cocktail parties and things with uh, with the Reagans uh, on some political stuff when he was uh, the governor. Had nothing to do with when he was president or anything the closest i ever got to the white house is my best friend uh, roomed with uh, uh trent lott when he was at usc uh, jay crosp and uh i did meet trent lott once i i have to tell you a funny story about politics i had a friend coming from uh uh from germany uh who, one of my students he he was a, a young fellow and uh, he wanted to uh to get a, uh, a, a visa. This was back in the uh, 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 let's see, early, mid 80s. And we, we were having a hard time getting it. So I called Jay and asked him if we could get some help. And boy, the next day we had the visa. That's how quick it went. 877 927 6640. We got Rich Anderson coming up really soon. I hope he's going to be on the line. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And um, I'm going to uh, have Rich on in just a second, but we, we're going to be closed in China's market until Monday. The Hong Kong market is uh, going to open tomorrow, but Japan will be closed. So uh, China's closed the whole week. We're going to see a wild gap on that puppy uh, come uh, Monday. So now we've got our good friend from Anderson Capital Management, uh, Rich Anderson. Rich, are you there? You bet. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? I'm good, my friends. Good to have you back. We've had so many questions about the grain market. So uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you, Rich, uh, was first of all, uh, in your overall view of what's happening with the volatility uh, of all these things. I know you do a lot of, uh, you know, trades and stuff in the financials. What, what's your feeling as far as the currencies and gold and some of these other things? Do you have an opinion? Well, well I was, uh, I, I think that... Uh, I'm looking to sell the euro. I'm looking to buy the dollar. I was surprised the euro's been able to put the rally in that it put in. Uh, you know, clearly Draghi, uh, Mario Draghi is going to have to do something, and he'll be doing it next month. Uh, Yellen's talking today, and I, I think uh, that's probably one of the better trades. I mean, you know, they've got big problems over their, with their banks. So, Banks are supposed to make money, and Deutsche Bank right now looks like it's losing between 8 and 10 percent a year. That's not good yeah. when you're a bank, you know, and their credit <laughs> default swaps, which yeah. is they're a form of insurance, you know, has doubled in price in the last month. That means that they think the odds of them having a problem and going out of business are high. Now, Europe won't let them go out of business, but, um, you know, they're going to stimulate like crazy. Um, I'm a little surprised by the rally we've seen in the end, and I, I'm thinking there's probably a good selling opportunity also. The, the, I mean, that's where the excitement is. The excitement's in the stock indexes and in, in the currencies right now. And, and de, de facto, the gold is becoming a, a quasi-currency at the moment. Uh, at least that's the way I'm viewing it. And we're kind of at uh, the 1200 levels kind of a demarcation point where we're either going to giddy up and go or you know it's high enough that sounds pretty good now we've uh, we posted the chart of uh, soybeans uh into the uh the room into the tiger tv today and basically um we're looking at possibility of uh, beans getting down another 30 or 40 cents is that a is that a logical scenario coming into uh, of course we've got we're gonna have planting season coming up in another couple of months so give us your idea here on the beans a absolutely absolutely you know the last seven years in a row november beans which is new crop beans and the one i'd be focusing on now it, i mean you can look at the july's too but they're about the same price and i'm looking at the notes for the most part um that have been trading at at ten dollars during this time frame you know at some point during this january february time frame they've traded at 10 bucks this year i think there's a chance that these november beans will trade closer to eight dollars which would be even more than what you're looking for they, there's nothing we had a crop report yesterday it was a big yawn there's nothing on the horizon in two weeks you'll have the uh, usda ag forum report in washington dc that's almost always negative because they're almost always planting more acres uh, you normally have a february break uh, the the oil share you know, the biodiesel is tied to the crude oil and heating oil, and, and corn is tied to ethanol to, to uh, gasoline prices. And it's, you know, there, there's nothing to help the markets out. The only thing that can help the markets out will be a weather market. And you don't have a weather market in the middle of, of the winter. And, and on top of that, a week ago, Argentina got a, a brilliant rain, a, a multi-million dollar rain, and really sets our crop up nicely. And the Brazilian crop's already made, and we're going into harvest. So th there's no surprise bullish factors that I can see. Now, later in the year, in the second half of the year, I think there's going to be some real interesting things. You look at the two big moves we've had 
caused by the El Nino this year. One was natural gas that went vertical, and the second was when it turned uh, stormy and the cattle went vertical. We'll mm -hmm. see those kinds of moves in the second half of the year. So volatility right now is cheaper than dirt for corn and beans, and so it doesn't hurt to start buying a little cheap, you know, buying some cheap calls out there for September and December because when all of a sudden the weather uh, problems do start to uh, exist, and they will, I, I, you know, I mean, they do every year, uh, that volatility will explode, and uh, I think that's probably your best opportunity. I mean, for right now, it's kind of boring. Okay, now we're going to, the uh, next chart that we posted in here is the chart of uh, corn. And, of course, you know, we've had uh, that big rally into July that uh, you were helping us with, and we were fortunate enough to catch a great deal of that. And now it looks like we got another bottom coming here somewhere below 350 uh, a bushel. We're around, what, 355 now, so we could easily uh, get a lot lower, I think. What do you? What's your opinion? Well, the the uh, the, the crop insurance is set by the average price in December and February for the farmers, and you know up until last year, I mean it was a guaranteed profit if you're farming. I mean the government was going to guarantee a profit. It's not so much this year, particularly with the prices that we're experiencing here in February, and so that might cut back some acres in soybean. Well particularly in corn, but also in soybeans. Um, and that's, that would be the beginning, but we're still going to need weather because we've got ample stocks, and until we get weather scares, you're not mm -hmm. going to have vertical. Okay. Now, uh, Rich, how about the, you know, you follow the ethanol situ situation with, with gas at $1.45 here uh, in uh, Tucson. I mean, this ethanol has got to be getting killed. It, it is getting killed, and, you know, these guys... Um, you know, the users, the people that, that grind the corn, everybody's buying hand to mouth because there's no reason to, to, you know, they know there's ample supplies. They're not, they don't have any huge profit motive right now. They're just, you know, trying to break even on their, on their crush. Um, you know, there's not going to be any increase. We're at, a blend, we're at a blend wall. The only way there'd be an increase in ethanol usage is if the Congress mandates it and I don't see that happening. By the, by the way, you're talking about politics. I, I have my annual fundraiser for my Congressman Paulson from Minnesota down here in Naples next week, and our guest uh, will be former Speaker Boehner. Uh huh. Well, they, they all have to have a job somewhere, and since they get these fifty thousand dollars speaker fees, fees, why not? You know. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to have that gig. Yeah, anybody would. Rich, uh, we're going to take a break here in about 30 seconds, so stay with us. We've got some more questions, and we want to cover the wheat market. And then also I'd like to get your perspective on, uh, you know, the oil, gas, and uh, also, you know, heating oil uh, when we come back from the break. But we do have to take a little break in here. Uh, how do folks, if they want to reach you, what's the best way uh, for them to reach you? you uh, what's your email address? Zone Trader at Vizzy.com. Zone Trader was uh, after Mark Douglas, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I Zone remember Trader. Mark. Yeah, I was talking to Paula <laughs> last night, and uh, and uh, she's doing okay. She misses him a great deal, as we all do. But boy, I tell you, I can't go a day without thinking about him because you know he wrote that book, Trading in the Zone, here in my office. We shared this office in Tucson for several years, and uh, well, you were here many times. So I you know. know, I've you know, visited many uh, times. It's uh, anyway. We'll be right back. All right, I'll be here. Okay. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced 
experience and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management on, and we are going to ask him about the wheat market. We've posted that chart into Tiger TV, and just like corn and just like beans, it looks like we're going to be making new lows here uh, very shortly, and wheat is one of the things that you grow, Rich, so why don't you tell us what you see? Well, what I see is that a market that's visiting the previous lows at 456 on the uh, nearby uh, chart. And my observation over the last year and a half, two years, is the markets love to go back down and recheck a low. <laughs> and when they don't close below there and they hold, it's cheap enough. And the, the, it's hard to get excited about any big bull move because, you know, we basically have the largest margin of error for any crop problems in wheat, and there are no crop problems right now. But it, you know, can certainly be in a trading range, a uh, 25 to 30 cent trading range. Rich, on a worldwide basis, how do we stand with food? Because I know anytime we have a bad crop, you know, the rest of the world's in big trouble because, you know, we give so much out. Or, you know, we well, we export so much. But what is the long-term situation, considering South America, China, Russia? What does it look like for food supply? That uh, will just over overwhelm the world with supply. Um, <laughs> You know, Brazil alone has hundreds million plus acres, probably closer to 200 million acres of some, something akin to uh, what the prairie would have looked like in uh, Minnesota and South Dakota back in the 1860s. And all they have to do is clear out the, the brush and they can plant it like crazy. The only thing that's kept them from uh, developing more land and planting more land is their infrastructure, the, the rivers and the railroads to move it to the ports. Uh, they don't have the roads, rivers or or uh, railroads to move it to the port very efficiently yet but but someday they will and they've certainly got the land mm -hmm. okay now 
Uh, we have a question from one of our listeners, and that is about what effect is happening with these interest rates as far as the loan rates that these uh, farmers can get, you know, for their for their crops. You know, when they plant them, they usually go in and hedge them out. Is there much going on there uh, with that, or is it pretty much copacetic what we've had before? Well, uh, I talked to the farmer that farms my land in South Dakota uh, earlier in the week, and basically he'll get charged between uh, four and five eighths and four and seven eighths for his interest if he wants to float it <coughs> he can get four and uh, four point six two and if he wants to fix it it's four point eight seven you know and I told him I didn't see a whole lot of difference I think the, the bigger thing is that these negative interest rates is making it harder for businesses worldwide Japan uh, Europe to borrow because what incentive is there for the banks to lend money when they can charge so little and yet the uh, rules and regulations say that you have to have all this capital behind any loan that you make and so the unintended consequence is it's getting harder for the businesses that really need money to to borrow that's that's such an incredible point rich if you stop and think what you you know what rich just told us folks that these interest rates dropping is very negative for business because banks have no incentive to lending money <laughs> Unless it's just a new credit card person where they get them for 25 to 30 percent. You know, most of the other stuff, car loans are very, very, uh, you know, uh, very, very low. I mean, my goodness. And, and mortgage rates are under 4 percent. So the, the incentive is certainly not there. That's for sure. That, and that's a big problem for businesses that really need that money for operating. On the on the oil markets, the thing that I would be watching the closest, Larry, is um, the difference between the nearby oil and say six eight months out. You know, we we're at uh, well diesel oil right now. Crude oil is thirty seven twenty seven versus the nearby is twenty seven sixty five. When wow. that curve flattens, that's when we'll start to see a bottom. Wow, ten ten dollar premium going out that far. Boy, right. they're really so if taking, I'm if I'm a yeah. producer, I can hedge out there and you know, I'm not getting at twenty seven, I'm getting thirty seven, so I can still live to fight another day. And on top of that, you know, up in North Dakota we've got over a thousand what they call ducks that's drilled in uncompleted wells in the Permian Basin we've got thousands more. So I mean you get the price to rally hardly anything, another five dollars. That you know, that now you're talking forty-three, forty-four for these guys. They'll start turning wells back on. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Okay, the final. Well, not the final question, but one other question that we have is about the. Uh, we need to talk about the moo cows. What's uh, what's going on in the cattle market? Well, they got too cheap, and then we had the winter storms, and the markets rallied like crazy. But everybody's been talking about how much the consumer is saving because of low gasoline prices. But the consumer only spends about 4% 4 of their budget on gas. So a, a savings in their gasoline is not huge. We're going to have a lot of cattle coming at us. Uh, the question is when because of the weather in the winter storms so uh, you don't want to fool around with the february and april i like you know buying the the ock and the dece and selling the june and the august uh, i think the relationships are going to change for you know two to four dollars and so that's kind of the way i'm playing it uh but you know you, you go short into the april and then all of a sudden you get a winter storm and and you know they're going to go vertical on you for two or three dollars so i'm i'm buying the backs and selling the fronts Okay, that makes pretty good sense. Um, we have one other question regarding the meats, and that is the hog market. And I haven't, I haven't traded hogs in a long time. But any any opinion that you have on hogs? I sold them this morning. I thought the a higher opening was a sale. Um, you know, I think you know they've ran up quite a bit, particularly versus the cattle. Uh, the, the only thing that the, the thing that would help all the commodities, whether it be the grain or the meats, would be a really weak dollar. I don't see that in the near term. I'm, and I'm talking maybe a five to ten percent drop in the dollar. One of the things people don't really appreciate is that every five percent up in the dollar, and we went up what 12, 13 percent last year, is like increasing the interest rates a half of a percent or more. So the Fed didn't need to raise rates because the dollar was already de facto raising the rates for us. And we're going to need, you know, a big downswing in the dollar that will light the fire in these in these grain markets. Uh, but that's, you know, that's months off. That's months off. 
It will almost have to be related to the uh, uh, some type of weather, because we've never had uh, uh, El Ninos back to back, have we, Rich? Uh, well, not re not very not major ones, not major ones. The mm -hmm. the key thing is to watch when this El Nino finishes up and turns into La Nina. If it if that occurs in this uh, April through June period, we could have a market like 2010, where you know corn goes up. 50 60 percent in uh, two three months yeah. but it, it, it but it's strictly because okay. of weather and and with, that is not something that's going to happen now that's why i'm out there buying cheap calls they're practically giving them to you um february is normally th the low time for the grain markets and then as the farmer puts his money in the ground when he starts planting the seed and puts his money in the ground the grain markets will start to come to life hey listen we want to thank you for being on and we'll have you on in another few weeks okay all righty. Good talking to hey, you. Thanks a lot, Rich. Uh, you're the Train best, well. buddy. Talk to you later, pal. Bye-bye. Bye. It was Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. We'll have a break here coming up, and then we'll review what's going on with some of these markets, and uh, we'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I'm going to uh, end the show by taking a look at this gold market uh, over a longer time frame. As you can see, we've had these, you know, big rallies in gold before. Last January, we had a rally that was $170 an ounce, and uh, we uh, almost made $170 an ounce on this last run. But the thing that I wanted to point out is if you'll notice on the far right uh, where we were in December and January, how we made those uh, higher lows. You see three higher lows. We started December 17th. We made another one on uh, December the 28th. That's when the stock market was topping. And then we made another one back on January the uh, 20th. And each of those was a 61% retracement of the other. Uh, the cyclical components were perfectly. In other words, eight days down after a run-up. And then we had a $128 run uh, in gold over the past several weeks, and that's why we've come up to this resistance. It should be pretty stiff resistance, I would think. But if we do get above that uh, 1208 level, then I think we could go a lot more. But the fact that the market has ran so quickly, to get a 3 to $5 uh, re retracement would really be uh, something, you know, pretty easy uh, to go through, I would think. Now, I wanted to uh, re remember what I uh, said a little bit earlier about the markets. Uh, China will be closed all week because of the Chinese New Year. Uh, Japan will open... Um, uh, Japan closes tonight, but Hong Kong will open tonight. Uh, well, that'll be tomorrow for them. So uh, Hong Kong will be open tomorrow. Japan will be closed, and China will be closed until Monday. So we'll probably have a, a lot of volatility in that Hong Kong market uh, tomorrow. So we'll we'll see if that has much of an effect. So far, we've held those those lows of the new moon. Uh, whether that's going to continue or not, we'll have to wait and see. But right now, that's what's happening. Uh, you know, it doesn't take, there's a lot of bearishness out there now. There wasn't much back in January, but there is now. So to see a counter trend rally here is not to be unexpected. Uh, in fact, uh, if you're a bear, that's what you're hoping for is to see if the market can get up into these areas of 1950 and possibly even, you know, 2000. 877 927 6648. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.